Great, so in this video, what we're gonna do is review some of the basic steps we use to create parts in Fusion 360 by recreating the I-beam from the example in our topic reading. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go up to document settings and choose units of inches so that we can better match the values from our text. Then we are going to create a sketch and sketch out the cross section of the I-beam. So we'll create, select the line tool here and just click once in a few different places to uh, draw that cross section. And um, I'm, I'm using the grid a little bit to help get the dimensions reasonable, but um, that won't be enough. We're gonna have to make sure that we also dimension the part. Uh, I'm also getting some uh, things a little bit misaligned on purpose so we can see how to use constraints to get those. So when you're done drawing, hit escape to get out of that line tool. And then we will uh, add some constraints here. So one thing is I would like for this part, so I click on it and drag this line, I'd like it always to be uh, collinear with this line that defines the inside of the other flange. So if I shift to select the second one and I right click, I can make them collinear. Now notice when I do that, that my mouse has changed and it has a little collinearity icon on it. Now, if I select a couple other points, those are gonna be made collinear as well. There you go, those are collinear and you'll see the little icons popping up right here. Okay, so now my flanges are all uh, going to be symmetric and vertically aligned. I can escape to get out of that tool. And I'd like to add some dimensions. So we said that this flange width would be five inches. Let's set that, that the thickness would be half an inch. Uh, the web thickness should also be half an inch. And the bottom flange thickness should be half an inch. We want this web to be in the center of the flange. Oh, that's not quite what I wanted, delete that. Let's try that again here and here. And so 2.25 inches, that would be half an inch minus, excuse me, five inches minus half an inch divided by two, 2.25. And then finally, we'd like to have the overall height here be 10 inches to match what we said in the top of it. All right, there we go. So we've got our uh, cross section fully defined and you, can, and you can see that because all the lines are now a solid black. So we'll finish our sketch by checking, checking that green check mark and then we will go to extrude to create a body. And um, we've got, a, it'll automatically select the profile for us, one-sided extrusion, a distance of 100 inches to match the drawing. And if we go to our home view, you can see now we have the main body of our I-beam. All right, next we'd like to add some holes. Then remember there's a bunch of little holes along the top and bottom surfaces. So we're gonna create another sketch. We're gonna view the, the top, zoom in here, use the circle tool and create a couple holes by clicking in center and then clicking roughly where we'd like the diameter to end. I will dimension this again and set the diameters to half an inch each. And we didn't say in the reading where these holes were exactly. Uh, so let's just set them to be one inch from either edge. And that'll give us a little bit of a buffer so they're not right on top of any other features, uh, but they're pretty close to the cantilever point on this beam where we expect the stress to be. All right, so we finish our sketch now and we wanna create another extrusion. In this case, we're going to perform a cutting operation and notice it hasn't automatically selected anything. So we're gonna to need to select these curves from our previous sketch. We'll click both of them in order to uh, create, that, create that cut. Uh, the direction, I see this little direction arrow is pointing the opposite of what I'd like. So, and I also I don't wanna go distance. I'd like to go through all please. And I want to flip the direction. Uh, now we're getting the preview of the cut. That's looking a little more like I expect. I'm going to say, okay. And you can see we've now got our first set of holes. Now I'd like to have holes spaced out all the way along the I-beam. So let's use this uh, linear pattern tool up here. And we're going to use uh, features 
and we'll select the feature we just created. In the direction, uh, we'd like to go along the, the line of that corner of the flange, the I-beam. Uh, now, we'd like to use a, a spacing distance, so set the distance between each instance of the holes. I want 10, hole, 10, in, uh, 10 instances and 10 inches apart each. If I say OK, you can see the preview appearing. That looks pretty good. And yeah, this, this looks kind of like what we expect. We've got little holes on the top flange and bottom flange of the I beam all the way up and down. All right, so the, the last step to match what we have in the topic reading is to create those big holes in the middle. So I'm going to look at this plane, create a new sketch, and uh, put a big hole there, dimension it. These are supposed to be about five inches in diameter. And again, we didn't say, but let's make them five inches from each edge of the I-beam so that they're nicely spaced. We'll finish that sketch, create a cut uh, through all. And if we look to see, oh yes, we need to flip that direction. Now we're getting what we expect. Say, so, okay, now we've got our first big hole. And once again, we can make a linear pattern. Everything is good now. Features, we'll click here. Uh, spacing, we'd like, oh, the direction is this. Like 10 of them. Space that 10 inches. And there you go. We have the main features of that I beam from the top of the reading. Now I'm going to add one more thing that comes up commonly in our designs, which is a fillet. Um, so if we come up here to the tools and select a fillet and then go down and click on each, oh, there's a, another edge there. And ooh, we can click that edge and this edge. Now we've got four edges selected, 0.25 inch uh, radius. Let's say, okay. Now, if we take a look at our, uh, the cross section of our I-beam, we'll see that instead of sharp internal corners, we've got these curves. And designers often use this to reduce stress concentrations that happen in those sharp transitions. All right, so that's a quick reminder of the ways that we can use Fusion 360 to model parts. Uh, and next, we'll take this component and we'll do a click by click uh, walkthrough of how to perform a basic stress analysis using finite element analysis in Fusion 360.